Welcome. So this session is all about improving the tension in your pelvic floor, whether you need to relax it more or strengthen it more. We're going to work on both of them today with a lovely mixture of Pilates and yoga movements together that will help um, with that tension around that area. So just so that you know how, how to actually think about the pelvic floor, it's actually the base of all where all the internal organs sit. Now the roof is the diaphragm and the base is the pelvic floor. So what we need is a really you know, accurate base so that all the weight of the internal organs has got some support on it. Now we can get a really better, better base by making sure we're in neutral pelvis. So when you stand, you want to have a lovely vertical pelvis. You don't want the pelvis out in front or equally at the back. You want to actually have a lovely natural curve in your back. So you may have to spend quite a bit of time finding that pelvic tilt to try and create what we call a neutral pelvis. That will enable us to breathe better and to control the pelvic floor muscles while we're doing some of the work. So we've got um, the pubic symphysis at the front and then we've got these lovely hip bones at the side which you can feel sort of um, if you push into your um, body a little bit. So that needs to be fairly flush, so that's what you're aiming for. And then the opening is less intense really. You've got a better base for the organs to sit on, less pressure coming downwards. So just to go back into um, the breathing, the top is a diaphragm shaped like a little um, dome. So as we breathe in, it creates that little bit of change in pressure and it flattens and it's pushing down on all the internal organs underneath it. So they're changing space, the belly expands. So we've got the rib cage going outwards, we've got this diaphragm going downwards and the belly slightly coming forwards in a natural breathing pattern. And at the same time we've got this lovely um, base which is getting pressed because all the weight of the inter internal organs have to go somewhere. So we get this feeling of almost stretch and everything rebounds back up so as we exhale everything comes back up, pelvic floor, belly usually tightens up and the diaphragm goes back to its normal dome shape. So we've got the breath in, everything pushing outwards the pelvic floor pushing downwards and then as we exhale we feel the reverse the pelvic floor push goes back up the belly muscles pull in and this lovely diaphragm goes back to its normal place so if you want to just stand for a few moments find your pelvis in neutral so we've got either a hand at the front hand at the back finding that little curve maybe moving the pelvis forward and back until we find the middle of both them extremes Feel that next breath in, expanding everything. And then as you exhale, feel that breath contracting everything. So try and get the breath movement correct first. So feel the expansion and then feel that contraction. Now remember it's going on in the tummy. You'll be expanding around the rib cage so you can feel the rib cages flare outwards and inwards. There's also pressure here as well. So just below your belly button, you'll feel that expand as well. And then the reverse, as you exhale, the belly will naturally come in, pelvic floor up, and this lovely diaphragm returns back to its normality. So you maybe want to try and relax that pelvic floor a little bit as you, you know, work with your breath. So as I breathe in, it's under that little bit of a pressure downwards. So as I exhale, I'm going to relax it a little bit or tighten it up, that's a sort of speak, it comes upwards a little bit. So breathing in, feel the pressure going downwards, breathing out, feel yourself draw the pelvic floor muscles up, the belly tightens, you exhale. Inhale, try and relax it, relax it, relax it, there's pressure pushing down on it, just lay relax, lay relax. And then obviously tighten it up, tighten it up as you exhale. So nobody knows what you're doing. Try not to let your bum muscles tighten. So that's quite difficult. You've got to try and just let the pelvic floor do its magic. <laughs> and also make sure that you're in that lovely balanced position with your feet and your neutral pelvis will make a bit of a difference. So let's just add some work to this motion. So we're going to stretch the front of the hips a little bit. So we're going to change the pelvis alignment a little bit. Push it forward. Yeah. You feel that the pubic bone 
and the safe room at the back which is our magic area changing shape a little bit and then I want you to just to take the hips backwards yeah so the sacrum has gone further back the pubic bone can't move much but this lovely sacrum as you move forward and back it's like a little tail yeah it's going to try and pull gently away from the front connection yeah so sitting in a chair pushing them hips backwards each time makes a massive difference to the way that you work the pelvic floor muscles obviously there's all this beautiful work for the legs and the, the bones the muscles but there's some lovely control and work change in the pelvic floor area as well so I'm just adding my arms so I'm going to get either a little bit Pilates where I can take the arms up and pressing or pushing them hips backwards and then the arms are pulling away so that works my core muscles naturally and then I can just relax a little bit here so this is my lovely in breath here and then as I get out of the chair I'm going to work the tension the pelvic floor muscles up pull the belly in to stand up breathing in I'm expanding breathing out and I'm coming back into this neutral position now if anybody wants to hold it there check your weights in your heels that you can straighten your knees you can push your hips backwards and you could hold it here for a few moments breathing in breathing out allowing that change to happen for a few seconds and then when you're ready to exhale stand the up work your bubble muscles yeah every time we ro rotate we can create a little bit of a, a tension in the tummy area so try and find your out breath when you rotate so I'm making it a little bit yoga here. I'm going to reach up on the in breath but then as I exhale here I'm going to twist and try and sit them hips back and work on this lovely control in the pelvic floor and I'm breathing in reaching up and as I exhale I'm twisting so you could again go a bit deeper each time or you could just keep it nice and you know comfortable and just twist from the waist muscles here as you exhale because that's when that lovely natural course it comes exhale to twist inhale just come back to normal last one pull the belly in and get this lovely feeling of motion okay let's just see how we feel about doing that pelvic tilt forward and back again yeah push the hips backwards and lift the toes now this time i've got straight knees so i want to imagine that the pelvis tilts as i tip over and it's almost like it's going up the wall with sort of wheels on them sit bones and i'm actually stretching my um front line for the pelvic floor in the thighs if i lift my toes and get that sit bone area further back each time nice one okay now remember the pelvic floor wonderful pelvic floors muscles going across and front to back so also the movement of the the hips side to side so wider the legs maybe push your hips to the side you'll feel one tight and one little bit slacker and then again one tight and one little bit slacker so you can almost feel which side you're, you know, you tend to put your weight on as well. So it's quite an interesting experiment just doing this exercise. <laughs> and then you can counteract it with a little bit of, you know, the forward and back, back extension here. And the hips to the side, come back to the front. So I could go all the way around again or go back into this lovely semicircle. Love this one for the back as well but at the moment really focusing on the change of the pelvic floor and the movement at the, the, the hips as well yes a couple of those while your legs are nice and wide start rotating at the hips properly turn the foot in turn the foot back out so it's back to maybe in neutral out neutral in neutral out neutral just a couple of those in neutral out neutral just feel the difference between you know the left and the right hip as well okay so i've got my legs in a nice wide position i'm just going to flow into something else i've got my hips going back so the sacrum is moving away from the pubic bone as i go backwards so i'm going to try and reach the floor just to get some sort of emphasis on that down phase as i come back the 
sacrum and the pubic bone are coming close together so that's a natural contraction so a nice sort of wide feeling now in the pelvic floor and then a natural contracted tense state to come back up so find that breath yeah so I've got this lovely down phase here and then this up phase in breath going over out breath contract sort of standing up finding that energy in breath and this lovely out breath as I come back up now maybe add a little bit more twist to it so as I'm twisting I need to exhale yeah exhale twist inhale back to neutral exhale twist inhale back to neutral movement at the back and the front of the pelvis abdominal work keep changing the breath to so what the movement feels like as well side to side is nice as well a little bit of motion down and then as you come up lead with your sternum to a nice position okay mother's legs quite wide for the moment there so i'm just going to go narrow Put one leg over the top of the other, back of the knee, front of the knee, inner thighs, pelvic floor muscles tighten up naturally here, yeah? So I can just put the toe on the floor, I can put the tailbone under, lift the sternum a little bit, I could sit in that position for a while, I could straighten the knees, feel the difference. Can you feel the inner thighs, the pelvic floor muscles tighten up a little bit? Breathing in, lengthen. Breathing out, rotate to whichever direction the foot is in at the front. Exhale. In breath, relax. Exhale. Twist. Nice one. Okay. And then we switch sides. So start with a big toe underneath. So engaging the toe, getting the back of the knee to the front of the other one. Sitting in this little chair for a moment. Bending and straightening or both feet flat on the floor really squeezing the thighs together Ooh. can we turn yeah can we stay here can you feel the difference when the inside side legs on this side compared to the other side i can I'm not quite as um, active on this side so i might just turn on the out breath in breath i might relax i'm turning to whichever legs at the front that's going to give me that power i'm going to also work the breath Everything coming back up again, exhale. Nice space in here. Out breath, twist, yeah, lovely. And just relax the legs again. And just one more position standing up. So whichever leg you want back, we call it warrior one in yoga. It's a great one for finding neutral. So if you're not comfortable with this stance, you just widen your legs a little bit. What you're after is that lovely vertical pelvis, yeah? So you may have to adjust with the pelvic tilt. So it's a nice one just to find a nice neutral pelvis. It's not forward, it's not back. It's got the ability to contract and relax. And so I might contract and relax. You know, I might take the arms up and then I might take them down. So as the arms go up, strenuous for the stomach. It's gonna be harder work for the butt for the thighs. So I'm gonna exhale. So I'm just going to do palms to the ceiling, push down into the earth, try and keep my stable pelvis, create that little bit of a back bend, nice one for the calf as well. So I'm taking that lovely out breath as I raise, and then the in breath, I'm just going to relax everything, relax pelvic floor, relax my belly, exhale here, tighten everything up and just hold it there for a few seconds, yeah. hold and hold and hold. And then we'll try the other leg, yeah? So we've got a different leg back, totally different sensation. External rotation of the hips really helps the pelvic floor muscles as well. So if you see me from the side, if I'm doing this, you know that I'm not working my neutral pelvis. So I've got the tailbone tucked under. Try and bend the knees. Try and feel that stretch in the calf muscles as well. And then add it all together. Get your breath working. It's so much easier with the breath. So as I go up, breathing in. Breathing out. So I might come back down. And I'm working. As I exhale, power, bend that knee more. Tighten up the tummy muscles. In breath, just release. Relax, looking down at the floor. One more time. 
Breathe in, out. Breathe in, in. Yeah, so we're just trying to really focus on the pelvic floor muscles today. Yeah? Now, I said that was the last one, but I like this one. This is it. It's called a T pose. Yeah, so whenever you're out dancing, <laughs> I like a little bit of salsa. Yeah. You tend to walk forward and back without having your feet in neutral and we definitely don't dance with the feet turned out, yeah? So I get a little bit of a pinty toed effect which is a really, really great way to contract your tummy muscles and also your pelvic floor, which is what we're after. So we're just walking forward and back, almost like a tightrope with one foot pinty toed inward. Now, try and imagine it's called a T position, yeah? So it sits on top of the toe and you start to turn towards the toe this time, so less salsa now, <laughs> more power. And the back leg's stable, so we've got to internally rotate, we've got to contract, press away, so that's my out breath. In breath, have a moment off, out breath, give it one of those. And one more time, feels good. Exhale. Push away, yeah, nice one. Hopefully that didn't hurt your knees. If it did, you're working too strong with the rotation. So I'm doing the same on the other leg. So get the salsa going first, forward and back. So you've got the turned toe inward and then you rotate outwards. Yeah, so get that little twist. And then just make that toe a bit more sort of T positioned and start turning to the toe. Exhale, inhale, turn to the toe, push something away. Inhale, exhale, inhale, let's do one more, exhale, inhale, see, that was worth doing it, <laughs> okay, let's just go down a little bit to the floor, which is a great way to work the pelvic floor, different angles of the body work the pelvic floor in different ways, so I'm going to practice my flexion, tuck the chin, exhale, let's look down at the feet, upper, mid, lower back, Belly's on my thighs, a little bit of compression there. I'm rotating like a rag doll. Walk into the end of the mat, one, two, three. Yeah, so I'm just turning around so you can see me from the side. So we don't want to be pulling our tummy muscles in all the time. Yeah, we don't want to be contracting all the time. It's quite damaging for the internal organs, but we do need to do that if we're adding a little bit of weight. And obviously the arms and the legs lifting up and down would be a little bit of a weight. So think of the sacrum and the pubic bone getting further away. Now how would that happen? You're going to pelvic tilt and stick your tailbone in the air so the sit bones go up the wall. And then you're going to take that contraction, move the pelvis and try and bring the tailbone and the pubic bone close together. Now that should be a natural in breath and out breath. Yeah. So this is me in breath where the tailbone's up and I've got nice distance. And then as I exhale, I'm using my stomach muscles. So I'm letting that lovely breath help me move my pelvis as well. Now the pelvis cannot work in isolation. So as we move in the pelvis, it's attached to the spine, obviously. And you know, the spine will work the, the chest muscles as well. So we get a little bit at the other end as well. We can get a lovely out breath as we look down. Move that pelvis and that lovely in breath as we go up. Yeah, so you could work on that a little bit. Now, like I said, if you want to add a little bit of weight to it and you feel confident with this one, you're going to bring your leg towards you as well. So there's a weight coming through here. So lots of exhalation here, lots of control. And then I extend that leg and do my lovely in breath. And that's a lovely way to get the pelvic floor muscles working even more when you start using your leg. Yeah, so tuck and in breath. I'm just do a couple on each leg, I'm switching around so you can see me from the other side. So same principle, tuck first, exhale, and then when you're ready, send that leg, not got enough room, in breath. And then contract on the out breath. And in breath. I'm just trying to allow that length to happen there. Okay, so we are creatures of habit, so as you go down and up, which way feels most comfortable to get down onto the floor? Just have a quick change of foot pattern, hip pattern, just feel the difference 
obviously internally there's a, a change as well yeah now if you are allow, allowing your knees to do this sort of seated position call it rock in, um, in yoga and there's no pain stay with it you can always shove this you know cushion between your thighs and your bum till you're ready for this sort of motion as well you know higher they the cushion the less intention or stress but it's a lovely one for getting some great control in the pelvic tilt area yeah it's quite difficult to be sat in either extreme in fact it's impossible so it gives you a nice feeling of neutral as well okay and then obviously if you come out of neutral yeah you come out of it and then you go back into it you can start feeling that there's actually some work pubic bone hip bone there's quite a lot of work just going on there yeah, so just moving forward and back is nice as well just forward and back providing that doesn't give you any pain <laughs> okay now i'm just going to go on to my bin because there's some other exercises you can do on the floor what you do with your hips affects your pelvic floor so whenever you get a chance externally rotate one hip yeah or both would be great you know practice with your leg in front if you're really struggling to sit down put your back against something to support but one leg is usually easier than both which is what we're going to do in a moment now it all fails miserably if the pelvis is still a little bit out of sync yeah so if you look down the hip bones are still sort of forward of the pubic bone or vice versa you may need some help until everything changes yeah everything changes eventually if we work hard enough so if i put something under my sit bones it'll give me a little bit more help to tilt my pelvis forward yeah especially when i do two legs yeah so this one is a, is a great one to sit in when you're watching the telly so you may want to just bring the weight of your body forward try and make sure it's coming from the hips this is not going to do anything so i want to try and feel that i'm moving my pelvis slightly backwards as i lean forwards so it's a little bit of tilting to move yeah and sometimes it feels good to do some stirring depends what time of year you're watching this yeah so it's cold and we're outside so something nice and warm as we stir in this pot so i'm pulling myself away from some fixed point there so this is getting quite a lot of stretch and squeeze a bit of tension and I am making sure I exhale so the diaphragm is pumping up and down and the pressure in the pelvic floor is changing so it all goes back to the breath so exhale as you push away inhale as you come to neutral and then exhale as you push away so that might be thinking that contraction and then a bit of relax but it's changing the tension of your pelvic floor muscles constantly as you're doing all this motion yeah and then you can get to the point where you can do the frog frogs are hard yeah <laughs> as you lean forward you're tilting your pelvis you're not moving your neck yeah so the time will come when you can get really comfortable and flexible i'm not i am not yeah and just make sure you're feeling it here and not in the back and definitely not in the shoulders yeah just moving into frogs and the frog leg could be in any position you want could be here you know giving yourself some support loads of cushions underneath and gradually letting them drop over the next couple of weeks a little bit of bouncing you know a little bit of movement and then we just go on to the floor if that's all right so just this nearly there nearly there <laughs> so when we lay down yeah we go into the pelvic tilt so i'm just going to adjust my mat so that you can see me from the side but while you're laying on your back, just feel the weight of the pelvis going to the floor a little bit. Yeah. So if you get down on the floor, this may be where I cut the video. <laughs> going down like Dracula's um, monster here. Yeah. yeah, Frankenstein's monster, sorry, not Dracula. So that's the way, the way up in it. You go onto your elbows and then you just lay yourself down. Yeah. And when you get down here, hopefully you've got some nice release in the um, psoas muscle. Knee might come up a little bit, which means you're a little bit tight there. So just try and have a few moments of stillness before you, you start bending your knees and working these poses. Yeah? And then when you put your feet down, you've got your head, your shoulders and your pelvis and your feet as a base control. So send some lovely messages that you're nice and balanced. Pelvic tilt, remember this 
bit of motion the first one you did. Pelvic tilt forward, pelvic tilt back and try and find the neutral of both them extremes. So we've now got the hip bones and the pubic bone quite flush. Yeah. You can maybe make a little bit more work go, you know, as, as we breathe as well. It's up to you. Just staying in neutral for a few moments, just relaxing your back. Bridge. Push your heels to the floor. Lift your hips into the air. Can you feel there's a contraction going on between the um, pelvic floor muscles, obviously, and the glutes? Now, when you get up here, you could relax your bum, yeah? You've got the stability, you've got this, these hips lengthening. You don't have to keep tightening the bum muscles up. Just let them go a little bit, relax them, just stay there. And then as you roll it down, upper, mid, lower back into the floor, there'll be a change in the way the pelvis sits back on the floor, hopefully should have changed shape a little bit and then it'll go back to neutral so as I go up pubic bone possibly gets a bit closer to my face I tighten everything up at the back as well but then as I go down I'm releasing it all yeah so I get a nice space between the pubic bone and the hip bones as I go down so the bridge is a lovely one to practice yeah we're bringing the knees together for anyone who's got iffy knees and you're just going side to side in a spinal twist. So what we do is stretch the inner thighs, outer thighs here. If there's no knee problems, widen your feet and just let your knees drop from side to side. The knees go over. And if there's no knee pain, just keep that moving. It's a really love one for the pelvic floor muscles. So you'll feel when you stay on one side that you've got a little bit of more tension in between the legs than you have on, one, on the other side. So notice there's a gentle pull and just go from side to side. Call this windscreen wiper pose. It's like your windscreen wipers, one leg goes and then the other one follows. That sort of lovely movement. And then that'll lead to our final one. So I'm going to leave you with this lovely happy baby. <laughs> now you could cross your ankles and if you've got really long arms you could hold your own feet. Now you could just rock from side to side, you know, crossing the legs in different ways. If you're a creature of habit and you always cross your legs one way, make sure you keep doing the weird one, yeah? Cross it the opposite way. Look okay, after that pelvic floor, yeah? Getting one leg, inside leg muscles are really tight. Anyone's able to touch the feet together, it's like doing the, um, the frog pose that we did earlier. You might be able to hold your own feet, hold your own ankles, Hold your knees, anything, but just change the shape of your, your pelvis a little bit. Let it go open. Relax for a few seconds. Take a lovely deep breath in, deep breath out. You can maybe pull the knees towards you. It'll change the shape of the pelvis. You get a nice pelvic tilt forward and back. Yeah. Some circle actions. Yeah. Or reclining butterfly. Soles of the feet together, the feet supported. Yeah, just a rock from side to side. It should create a different um, pelvis shape. You know, it should feel like you've got a tiny little bit of a cushion underneath this lower back now. It's lifted off the ground. If you sit for a long time, the pelvis will tuck under. Yeah, So we're reversing what we naturally do with our seated position. So these open positions, rotations of the hips, a little bit more curve in the lower back. Maybe what most of us need, but who knows, yeah? Who knows? You may never sit down. <laughs> okay. And then just bring the legs to a nice stretch. Maybe go for a reach over the head. You may want to add a little bit of a relaxation to this. You know, a couple of breaths in, a couple of breaths out. Feeling the belly expand, feeling it contract, feeling your body weight sink to the floor. That'd be nice. Or you may be ready for doing something else. So always roll to the side. Push up, be, cough, be cautious as you come up. And I hope you've enjoyed doing some pelvic floor movements and obviously working the body as well. Yeah. <laughs> so enjoy, nice to see you all and um, take care. Thank you very much.